So let's go. So if you've never been out that way, here is what the uh, the depot looked like before they tore it down. That probably is a before uh, 1920. Look at the old automobiles there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would guess uh, right after the turn of the century, uh, World War I time. This is the uh, freight house part of it. And I'm not sure there also wasn't a, uh, a uh, restaurant in that because look at the big chimney on there. I, I think I read someplace that there was a restaurant and freight house on that corner there. Not freight house, but you know, where you put your baggage and so forth. Baggage room. That's what they would call them. So. They did have a little snow that one winter. I wonder how far they shipped it before it melted <laughs> off. Nice postcard there. The train on the left, of course, is on the, the branch line going north. Here's the Milwaukee original station, which mm -hmm. happens to be still in existence. It's a uh, farmhouse now. This is their second station. Ron, I have a question about the first station you showed. Yes. Um, was it the Chicago and Northwestern or was it the Northwestern Railroad? No, that's a Milwaukee. No, no, <laughs> no, I meant before. Well, let me go back. This one right here. Keep that going. That's this one. The, the brick about. one. Right. That here. one. That is a second station. Okay, but is it is the railroad the Northwestern or is the railroad the Chicago and Northwestern? Yeah, it's really the Chicago and Northwestern. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I I have kind of abbreviated from time to time. This is what the Milwaukee looked like just before they tore it down. Uh, on the left is where the tracks were. Their tracks had long gone by, uh, by this time. They had an interesting area here that, uh, you know, the, the uh, wagons could pull under uh, to stay out of the uh, weather. And this is the tower uh, where the Milwaukee, of course, is the these lines here and the Northwestern are these over here. The depot is right back here. And there'd be another uh, uh, diamond up in here too, I, where the, uh, uh, the branch line crossed. This is a city train coming in from the west at this point, uh, Milwaukee has already removed one track. And Northwestern lost the city trains to the Milwaukee. Here's another picture of it. Uh, in LA, just before they had a wreck that took the tower out. After that, why the, uh, the Milwaukee abandoned the track from here to Cedar Rapids. This is looking east from the tower area. There's the big uh, elevator there that I have modeled. These tracks would be going back into the paper mill. This was the freight house down here. This is the Tame and Toledo Railroad here and it it looks like it connects here to the uh, to this line. I'm not sure if this is actually the Tame Toledo here that goes to the, the depot, 
or if it's the jewel branch. I'm sure that this is the jewel branch. Mm. And that's a question in my mind, although I did label it as a jewel branch. This is uh, when Harding died, why uh, uh, if this was his funeral train coming through Iowa. And there is the water treatment plant or in the, uh, the coal chutes on the Northwestern. Uh, it's, I would go here and visit my uncle and worked in the, the, uh, the pump house. And I think that this is over on the Milwaukee. It was not labeled, but it doesn't look like anything that the Northwestern had. But uh, I have seen some pictures of the Milwaukee ones, which I do not have. I've seen them in books, and I believe that's where this one is. Kind of an unusual sand tower, isn't it? More like a water tower. Yes. I like this picture. They're cooling off the hogs as a stock train goes by. Here's the crossing guard at uh, Highway 63. I remember that, that guy being there uh, every time a train went through. And uh, I, uh, I had a company build the uh, crossing gate uh, uh, shack and uh, it, they're still available. And uh, they, it's a really nice uh, laser cut uh, model. There's a roundhouse in Tama for the branch line. Okay, we're looking east there to the east yard. When they say the east yard, I, there is no west yard, so it is the only yard. But uh, you can see uh, off, off, over here is uh, the uh, roundhouse. And the yard is actually right in this area right here. There was a track that came over like this that went to the stockyard. And this picture has been put in a lot of magazines. This is the uh, train coming through what they call the Narrows. It's where they, it was a, a big cliff and on the other side is the Iowa River. And so it kind of got its name from that. Sevdi was the person who took the picture. There's a couple of snow plows that are sitting there on the, uh, the branch line track. Interesting that they had uh, taken their old tenders and made it into a snow plow. And, and then of course the uh, more traditional one behind. The big building behind is uh, the uh, Neal's Creamery, which probably at this point was already out of business. About when was that picture taken, Ron? When was it taken? Yeah. Probably in the uh, 80s. So this is, now there's some, this is some city pictures. And uh, we're looking west on 3rd Street, which is also called Main Street. I want you to look at the, uh, <laughs> the uh, awnings here. Some of them are up and some are down. You know, the awnings will always be on the, the buildings that face the south. And uh, I've built some awnings that I'll probably put out on our uh, uh, weekly letter here in a couple of days. I need to make some of these uh, bay windows though. I think that's pretty neat to put those on a building. I think I have a, a caboose bay window that'll look okay. And this is what it looks like now. Uh, Tama is really, uh, uh, the population's about the same, but the downtown doesn't amount to much. And that's, of course, that's pretty typical of all the little towns. This is almost the same place, except turn around looking the other way. And uh, probably uh, not such a, an interesting thing, but that was the only 
record service in town was at the old Pelham garage. And I think that would be a, a neat model to make. Was that but, deep rock? You know, I don't know what they had originally. There were, there was a uh, DX in town, but it was on the other side. And I don't remember what their, I, oh, I know what it was, it was Standard Oil. See it right up here? Oh, Standard oil. thank you. And I think that they were able to pull a car in here before they, they put this antenna up. AMA had a lot of hotels because it was a, uh, uh, you know, the uh, division point on the, the branch line. This one being the Central Hotel. Here's the Clifton, a really early picture of the Clifton. And here's a later picture of the Clifton. Although it's gotta be early because look, we've still got the old uh, uh, small uh, trolley going by it. Ron, I got a question, it's Rod. Would they have been conniving enough to uh, schedule the trains to force people to stay there overnight just to get business for the hotels or not? I, I really doubt it. Uh, Tama was a big manufacturing. Uh, they had a, uh, because of the river, they had a, a, uh, a lake, which we'll see a little bit uh, coming up. And uh, I think there was enough people coming through there that uh, they didn't have a problem with that. Most of the other the other hotels which I don't have pictures of were there during the time when the branch line was uh, uh, was very active, and of course you had to have all your railroad people and needed places to stay. Did they have trains every day from even the branch line? I'm sure the branch line had one train a day. Probably it's probably stopped in the '60s. And of course, uh, the Northwestern had all the city trains. Uh, the Northwestern probably had uh, around uh, 12 to 15 trains, passenger trains a day, because everything going to the West Coast on the Union Pacific went on the Northwestern up until the 50s. Thank you. This is the paper mail. Paper mill happens to be still in existence today. Uh, as you can see by the sign, they made eight case fillers. If you don't know what that is, you know, in a, uh, a wooden egg uh, case, you have cardboard, which keeps the eggs from bumping into each other. And then you can fold it up, it's flat and it opens up like an accordion type. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yep. You don't see them anymore. I mean, they've long gone. I don't know what how people who uh, uh, raise chickens for eggs, I don't know how they, uh, they handle that anymore, but in the stores, you don't see anything like that. So here's a picture of the uh, of the uh, paper mill at this point. Now this track right here is the Milwaukee coming down. Remember the Milwaukee is over here and it's going to cross in Tama. So by when it crosses, it now can come back into here, and then it crosses inside the paper mill, and then it comes up here, and this is also the Milwaukee. And this would be the Spawn and Rose uh, Lumber Company, which was big in Iowa at the time. And uh, apparently that's what all of these uh, tracks are, people uh, uh, unloading lumber and loading it up and hauling it off to other places. The elevator here was uh, controlled by Beal. And this is the elevator in the Northwestern. Beal controlled that elevator. So he had the option to ship whatever railroad was the cheapest. Okay. I'm looking at Google Earth while you're describing this. And it's interesting to see what is not there anymore. 
I lost everything, just a second. We still see the same picture, Ron. Yeah, you, I know. I, I don't see a picture. That's a problem. Hmm. All I see is a flower. Oh, there. Okay, this is a uh, a fire uh, map showing the, the uh, how the tracks came in there. Now, this track went further and came around like this, but this is the Milwaukee track here and down here, and these this track is the northwestern track. This is northwestern. To the left is Cherry Lake, and uh, that would the reservoir provided uh, water power for the uh, uh, for the city, so they had electricity early on to uh, for all, for the manufacturing uh, several manufacturing places that were there. This is a uh, a large manufacturing place that was gone before my time, but you can see they made. Uh, some pretty heavy stuff with hammers, cylinders, wrenches, and gasoline engines. And uh, of course, I have uh, that on my layout. Spooner's grocery. Spooner would uh, get uh, carloads of potatoes and bananas and oranges and things like that in. And then he would, uh, because you can see, he has a fleet of trucks. He would ship them all over the state of Iowa to different grocery stores. This is the only good picture I, well, it really isn't all that good of Beale's elevator. This elevator back here is the one that's on the Milwaukee. The one that's over here is the one on the Northwestern. All of these are coal uh, sheds in here. This is a scale house. This would be a great picture to have, but nobody seems to know where the original went. But uh, Neil had a quite a fleet of cars, and uh, you know he was a maker of blue ribbon butter and supplier of eggs and uh, poultry, dressed poultry. It, Ron, yes, is, is that two different companies? One with starts with a B, and one starts with an N. Yeah, one's Beal and this is Neil. Okay, thanks. I hope I spelled them right. That's the way the creamy looks today. I, I'm told it is now an apartment building, but there is a a, a slaughterhouse in town, and the town is full of uh, of uh, people from different countries coming in to work in the slaughterhouse. So uh, we talk a little bit about the Tama and Toledo Railroad. Uh, this map shows both the Tama end and the Toledo end. And then I cut it apart and you'll see a little difference there. You can see it a little different. This probably, if looking at this probably tells us exactly what happened here. The Milwaukee, of course, is here, although that doesn't follow the picture all that well that we saw earlier. The black, heavy black line is the uh, TNT. And uh, here's the uh, interchange between the Milwaukee and the Northwestern. And here is the Toledo Northern, which became part of the Northwestern going up to Toledo. This was all abandoned before my time. But this little spur coming back was was there clear up to about 1940, and it, it there is a power plant down in here, and it provided power for the power plant. This is a juvenile home. It provided uh, 
uh, coal for the juvenile home. And it indicates that this goes a uh, spur up to the uh, lumber company. There's the Sanborn maps of the uh, power company. And here's uh, the area where the, uh, the railroad came down. Actually, the TNT. And we won't bother to read this if you are interested. Well, you can take a look at it when it goes to uh, YouTube. But it tells the history of the uh, TNT. <clears throat> the, uh, the trolley line was abandoned uh, early on, and they built another line uh, up alongside the Northwestern in order to provide coal for their power plant and also coal for the power, uh, the uh, uh, juvenile home and other industries they had in Toledo. So the two railroads looked like double track. Uh, here's the history from another uh, historic history book and a little bit, there is a little bit of controversy between the two. <laughs> and some more history, indicating all of the different uh, streetcars they had and the uh, diesels. Because when they built the railroad for freight only, it didn't, was not electrified. I thought that the industries in Toledo was kind of interesting. Uh, you can see here that Schaefer uh, uh, produce had uh, eggs, poultry, cream, furs, hides. And of course there was the Ford dealer, whoops, whoops, whoops. Uh, the Pyramid Lumber Company, Toledo Brick and Tile. Tama had a brickyard too. Uh, apparently the clay there was pretty good for making bricks. And there was a candy maker I can't believe that he actually shipped anything by rail, but uh, anyway, it was. It was a cheese factory, and the canning company. It uh, I, that was working back when I was a kid. My uncle had a uh, had a little interest in that. He was a grower of sweet corn. Anyway, they canned sweet corn and beans and beets and pumpkins and lye hominy. I'm not sure I know what that is. Fruits and meats. Of course, this other is behind here. I can't see what the other says. Yeah, all your people are, are. I can see all of you guys, but anyway. It says baked beans. Baked beans. Okay. Thank you. I had to, I just think that's a great picture. That is. Yep. So now somebody needs to build one of those. Like, you know, it's interesting that the, the front of uh, uh, old lumber yards, a lot of them were built exactly like that. There's one up there, uh, Doug, where you were at, very similar yep. to that, wasn't there? Yes. Yep. Still there, just not a lumber yard. It's a very common de design you see all over Iowa. So, yeah. Yep. That one's interesting that you got windows at the far end instead of a door to drive all the way through. Yeah, that is. You, had to, yeah. you uh, backed the wagon in or your truck in and, and picked up your uh, supplies. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's possible because of the camera angle. You see the windows at the top? Yeah. It's possible that that is windows up uh, on the second floor. Apparently, it had a second floor in it. Uh, usually what they had was a walkway down either side of the alley up on the second level so that you could get to the stuff that was stored higher up in the bins or up on the on the um, flooring up there. Yes. They would store lightweight stuff like bags of insulation and things of that nature. So this is Toledo. Uh, everything is still there at this point, uh, including the statue of that uh, of the guy that was in the Civil War. This was the biggest car that the TNT ever purchased. It didn't last very long because it was far too heavy and hard on the track. They got rid of it right away. <laughs> Here we are back up at Toledo with their standard streetcar. One of the enclosed cars they had several of these. This is the junction that I think that uh, the uh, 
where the, uh, this goes to the juvenile home, this line. This one backs off here and then goes down to the power plant. Got an original car that they had closed. There was the first locomotive. Apparently with that uh, uh, tank car there, they must have served a oil jobber up that way. Uh, uh, but the coal cars were all going into the power plant and to the uh, juvenile home. Interesting to see a CNEI. So this must have been Illinois coal. And they kept their locomotive that's at the uh, City Park yet today. And here's their second locomotive. Not sure what's going on there. Maybe they're, maybe it's all over. They're abandoning the whole thing. So I thought I, we would take a, a little look at the uh, Chicago Northwestern branch line to Jewel. It was originally the Toledo and Northwestern built right after the, uh, just before the turn of the century. The line was much longer than to Jewel, but when the Northwestern purchased it, why uh, they didn't take any track out. They just changed the, uh, uh, the terminating point for the branch. So here's a, these will be the pictures of the depots along the way. There's Toledo, Garwin, Gladbrook. I've got quite a few pictures of Gladbrook and the, uh, the Great Western and the uh, Northwestern that went through there. There's Beeman and Conrad. It's interesting which ones are two story for an operator and which ones aren't. Because it, it I mean, just slip back a bit. Garwin is no bigger than Beeman or Conrad. And it's so close to Tama. It's surprising that there would be a, 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 an operator that lived overhead. Gladbrook is by far the, the bigger town along the line here. And Whitten, I've never been to Whitten, but notice it's got a two story uh, depot such as uh, Garwin had. Here's Gifford. Now, Doug, help me out here. Which one is the M and St. Ellen, which is the Northwestern? We're looking west from the top of the water tower that serves the Northwestern and the tracks that are crossing um, are the M and St. L. So. so the passenger train there would be on the, the interchange track and yes. probably be a Northwestern that backed in, or uh, what do you think? I would say it's probably a Northwestern that's just backed in and maybe to get it in the clear for something else that's come through. So, it, of course, at this point, maybe that's as far as they went. Well, that could be, yeah. Off in the distance, you see the um, pit for the quarry that was. Um, Gifford's a big sand and quarry operation still today. They now operate behind what the photographer is at, but you can see the pit in the distance and some cars there. And then the windmill that's off to the right of the photo, um, that's where they had a, um, a coal um, op operation. The concrete pillars are still standing there for coaling locomotives, uh, uh, Fairbanks Morris. Um, cooling tower and uh, the concrete posts are still on the ground there about where that water tower is at. They had quite a platform there. You can see uh, how long the platform is for the, yep. the M and St. Allen for the Northwestern. Yep, and there were two water tanks. Each railroad had their own water tank. So the M and St. Allen is just to the north of the diamond and, and the photographer standing on the roof of the Chicago Northwestern one. About, I was about 12 years old when the, uh, uh, I guess it was the uh, National 
I had a steam train uh, uh, ride up to Gifford and back. Uh huh. And I don't know if anybody else was on that from this area, but uh, I, it was quite interesting for me as a young guy, young kid. Yeah. And this is Lawn Hill. I don't. Do you know where that's at, Doug? I've been to Lawn Hill. Yes. It, that's is um. It, I, that is west of. Uh, Gifford, uh, north of oh, the southwest of Eldora. It's a little spot in the road. There's a big green elevator operation there now. That's about all it's there. Everything yeah. trucked out. Every, everything's trucked out. And uh, trying to think what it's sits, sits north of, but yeah, I've been there so. Here's Hubbard. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, they, what was going on that day, but a lot of people. Another picture. Radcliffe, that must be, ought to be a, just a wide spot in the road too. That's uh, a little town. I know a fellow lives there. <laughs> Got a grain elevator operation. It's um, uh, straight west of Eldora, straight west of Eldora, Hubbard, and then Radcliffe, Hubbard, straight north of Colo on Highway 65. We drive through there quite often. Kind of a nice picture of Ellsworth. Notice that several of these are been taken in the wintertime. <laughs> yeah. Big grain elevator behind the, the uh, people. And Jewel uh, is the end of the line for the branch line. At that point, they met another uh, Northwestern uh, lot branch. And uh, that's uh, in the timetable, that's listed differently than the, this one. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that's the end of it. Okay. Yeah, the Lawn Hill is just north of New Providence. So a little bit wider spot in the road. Any questions? Thanks, Ron. Yeah, thanks, Ron. Those are great, great pictures. Well, we did that pretty fast. I guess I thought that uh, it would take a little longer. No, uh, it's all right. Yeah, you did fine. I've got, let's see. I've got a photo here that I want you to look at if I can get my finger put on it. So I'm going to share a screen. You see that? That's the Milwaukee. Okay, well, what I'm looking at is I'm wondering if I can I'm going to enlarge it here. Is that that same sanding tower or water tower set up? I think so. Remember, it was a round tower like that looked like a water tower opposed to a a, yep. uh, have sand in it. Yeah, because it's above a little building, but then I, I see what looks like the sand tower standing behind it. So that's, I'm just curious. Somewhere I have that picture and I, I couldn't find it today to, uh, to show you. But uh, notice that it, the stock cars in that train, a lot of mm -hmm. stock went through Iowa. Yeah, it's just just a nice photo of the facilities there at Tama on the Milwaukee. That's a very sophisticated chute mechanism for dropping the coal too. For the, yeah, for the, the other side of the track. Well, I noticed that there's two of these tanks here for apparently for sand. Oh, one on one for each track. So. Yeah, I hadn't noticed that, but you see, there's a little pipe right here. I bet that's the sand pipe. Looks uh -huh. like a rope. Yep. Notice how everything is coming in in gondolas. If you're in Iowa, you don't see any hopper cars. 
Yeah. Yep. And this one's this is drop bottom gone. You can see the mechanism there. Yeah. So. Thanks for uh, bringing that up because I I have that picture somewhere. Yep. Yeah. That's no. That's fine. I just pulled up my pictures of Tema and was as you were talking. I go, oh, that I'm scrolling through there, and that looks familiar. Here is here's the ICC drawing for the tower that used to stand there before it got knocked out. Yeah, I have that in good shape. Uh, the, all of the, that had uh, three or four pages to that. Uh -huh. Almost every every building in Tama, I have the uh, uh, the uh, report, the sketches on. Yeah, the, the yeah, I have almost. I think I have everything that the uh, archives has. Yeah. This one picture here is one I've been looking for. Uh, go back that one right there. Uh, I do not have that picture. Which one's that? Well, it's just right in. I don't know if you can see my. You probably can't see my cursor. No, I can't. Okay, there's the Tame and Toledo in the middle, and that right to the left of it. It's to the right of the uh, thing with the green. That one. That one. Yeah, that's number two. So okay, yes. so that tells the tale that the uh, the stockyards was on the TNT. Ah, okay. So that was probably another reason that they wanted to uh, continue the business. Sure. Yeah, and look at the insulators on the power pole there. Insulators are, are an interesting subject. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see, there was you know, you're you're talking about the you know, here's the butter making room in the Neil Creamery. Yeah, I have all those. I decided not to put those in, but but yeah, I think I think you probably sent these to me. No. I I I know I sent you the washer or not it isn't the washer, but uh, there's the tanks up there. I uh the uh, World War II tanks, you just, you found them. Yep, yep on a, they're on a great Western flat car, so. B back in the uh, 80s, why uh, I was a member of the Historical Society up in Toledo, and there was a woman up there that knew me uh, because she was a neighbor of ours when I was a kid. And uh, I, we scanned all the pictures that they had at the time of railroad stuff. Sure. Yep. Plus, I bought uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, the Sebti stuff that was of Tama. Interesting. Does anybody uh, know who he is? I mean, he used to have a lot of pictures published, but he was a great guy to uh, to trade pictures with other people. So what we found in his collection was a lot of stuff that was not taken by him, and his pictures probably were ended up somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Here's a, is this a photo of the tower or something else in the derailment? That's something else. That's not the tower. Okay. I didn't think so. You good. Yeah, here's, these two photos are from Carol Price. So they wiped out something in town. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't, I've never seen those. I'm not sure exactly where they were at. Yeah. Well, it, they're marked the Tame Tower, but obviously that's not correct. No, the tower looked, I think I have uh, the newspaper clippings of the tower. I need to look those up and uh, send you a picture. Scan them so you have something. Okay. Uh, let's... Oh, let's stop just a minute. Go go to the left where the, uh, uh, the uh, sail barn is. That's an interesting picture of the sail barn. Yes, I found this one. Oh, I, I research all kinds of things, but all the farmers in town with their trucks. So probably, yeah, and a few cars with, with trailers that, you know, it looks like a, a, a good uh, late 30s or 40s vintage photo, so. 
interesting picture. Yeah, and of course there's there's one of the roundhouse that you. What I didn't include because I couldn't find them was the uh, Thai plant. Uh, Tama had one of the, uh, at the time, just before World War II started, had the, a modern Thai plant that was the largest in the United States. Yeah. The problem was they needed water and uh, you couldn't get pipe because of the world of the uh, World War II was on. So uh, uh -huh. they had to go to uh, Washington to get an exemption in order to get pipes enough for them to uh, uh, get the plant up and running. It had the longest retort in the, in the world at the time. But the whole thing lasted just barely 10 years. The problem wow. was the creosote was leaking into the Iowa River and was from Tamas down below the river or below why uh, fish died off like crazy and nobody wanted to, everybody that was fishing, they'd fish above the plant, not below the plant. <laughs> anyway, today, the tanks that was used for the, uh, uh, the penta that was put into the ties uh, is now used for uh, uh, the blacktop roads or asphalt roads. And that, yep. as far as I know, from Marshalltown to Cedar Rapids, Tama is the only place in the Northwestern that has an in, two industries. They have the paper mill and they have that, uh, uh, the asphalt uh, tanks. I, they may get a whole train load of them when they uh, fill the tanks up. Interesting. Well, and here's the, here's the tower. You're looking west and northwestern and you get the Milwaukee crossing. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And then here's, here's another one of it in color with the, this so I, i'm going to make a speculation there you know the the uh the second engine there looks like a, a either a union pacific or a a milwaukee it's a little hard to tell but the first one of course is a northwestern engine but the yep. I, I think the second one is a union pacific engine but of it's, course they would have to like have a, a northwestern engine in the lead to go from tama to cedar rabbits because of their uh, uh, the way they signaled. That's right. So, so a well, train I'll was... stop. I'll stop sharing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Thanks for the extra pictures, Doug. Oh yeah. So. It's Steph. So who we got next week? Jared is on next week. He's going to be talking about how he models deciduous trees on his layout. So that should be oh, good. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm anxious to see that. I've sent him uh, two or three boxes of tree, uh, uh, or whatever they call them. Armatures. So, yeah, so he, <laughs> yeah, armatures. So he promised me that he would do a clinic on those. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we have Chuck and Jared to thank then. And uh, yeah, so we'll look forward to that next week. And as always, if you're interested in presenting later on down the road, uh, just let me know. We're always looking for presenters. And uh, Ron, thanks very much for putting together the presentation tonight. Everybody That's stay great. Warm. All yeah. right, stay safe and warm. Yeah, you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Bye, everyone. Take care, guys. Bye. Thanks, Ron.